This vent is part of a silent HVAC system I created for my home studio. I've spent the last year building a music studio in my basement, and the HVAC alone took months and months of planning. Today I'm going to unpack the materials I used to ensure that I wouldn't have sounds from the rest of the house bleeding into my recordings. These methods include a technique I developed that you simply won't find anywhere else. I'm excited to get into HVAC because this is where the unique challenges of renovating a space within a house to accommodate a music studio come into play. On YouTube, there are many examples of home studios built in garages or additions. I've also scoured through books and blog posts to find examples of isolating HVAC on a shared furnace. None of the examples I found dealt with the same challenges I have in my house. Stick around to the end of this video to find out just how effective this HVAC system is. Hit like and subscribe to be notified when future videos come out. The first seven or eight videos of this series are focused on building the studio, and afterwards I'll get into acoustic treatment, lighting, and other design elements. The first two videos have already been posted and you can access them with the link on the screen or in the description. One of my top priorities for the HVAC system was having fresh air enter the studio. This means that any system like radiant floor heating or ductless air conditioners wouldn't be the right solution. Living in Canada, I have a typical furnace already installed in my home along with an HRV or air exchanger. The HRV brings fresh air into the furnace, which is then mixed with the air being distributed throughout the house. The challenge with these systems is that a lot of rooms are connected to the furnace through the same ducts, so it's easy for sound to travel from one room to another. Another challenge is the turbulence introduced by the metal ducts, and you don't have to be close to the vent to hear it. When I started building the music studio, I had an unfinished basement to work in. For the HVAC, that meant the ducts running wherever they needed to in order to get fresh air to the rest of the house, so some of these needed to move to make space for the studio. Here's one of the ducts that ran straight through the front of the room. I tucked that one into the floor joist area and ran it around the other side of the I-beam. At the back of the room, I rerouted all the ducts tight against each side of the room. The furnace is on the opposite end of the basement from the studio, and the largest duct that could travel all the way from the furnace to the studio was six inches in diameter. I was determined to have both a supply and return to the studio because the room will be completely sealed when it's finished, so having fresh air is critical. It's also best practice to put the supply and return vents on opposite ends of the room. This creates the most uniform distribution of air throughout the room. Ultimately, I decided on the supply at the front of the room near the floor. Living in Canada, this is especially important for the winter months. Having the vent near the floor helps to keep the hot air low to the ground as it enters the room. The return vent is near the ceiling in the opposite corner, which removes stale warm air from the room. So what options do we have to address sound in a ducted HVAC system? There are insulation products that can be wrapped around metal ducts, and these will help reduce vibrations, which are a significant contributor to sound transfer. By reducing the vibrations, you get less sound traveling through the ducts. You can also get ducts that are lined with fiberglass and a protective coating. This is even more effective at reducing sound within ducts because you have a soft barrier on the inside rather than the rigid barrier of a metal duct. At face value, these seem like reasonable options, and they will certainly work for many situations, but there are a few drawbacks. Wrapping ducts to dampen vibrations will only address a portion of the sound. Sound will still travel through the ducts because it is a wide open space. The fiberglass liner is a little better since the surface is soft rather than hard, like the difference between carpet and hardwood. But again, there's still a wide open space for sound to travel through. Additionally, I wasn't able to find any reliable data on how long the fiberglass line ducts would last. I'm finishing my basement with drywall on the ceiling and walls, so I wanted to have confidence that the HVAC I was installing would last decades and also stand up to a standard duct cleaning. So what other options do we have? Well, one option is to create a brand new set of ducts that only connects to the music studio, and that's exactly what we did. One supply duct and one return duct dedicated to the music studio, both connected directly to the furnace. Technically, the studio ducts are still connected to other ducts with open space, but it would take so long for the sound to travel from one room to another that the sound is significantly reduced. We also have specialized ducts to dampen the sound transfer at both the start and end of each duct connected to the studio. My HVAC contractor was able to source a duct designed specifically for reducing sound transfer. It's a perforated, flexible metal duct wrapped in insulation. It looks like this flexible metal duct, but with lots of small holes. You curve the duct in an S shape, and these bends in the airflow cause the majority of the sound to be lost through the holes and absorbed into the insulation wrap. There's one of these connected to the furnace at the start of each duct, and by placing them at the studio, any unwanted sound from the furnace or other rooms in the house is dampened long before the ducts connect to the studio. 
At the end of the duct, which enters the studio, we have a similar flexible duct, but it's a plastic duct with no perforations. This is intentional to avoid any sound vibrations traveling from the ducts to the drywall that make up the walls of the studio. A more advanced sound attenuator is a baffle box, and it uses flexible ducts inside a sealed box lined with insulation. A baffle box will be more effective than the ducts connected at the furnace because the curves are tighter and the HVAC travels through a tightly sealed box to block out any sound. I used a baffle box for the return duct and in order to save space in the gym, used a flexible plastic duct but with no S-curve for the supply. So far, I've created separate supply and return ducts to feed the music studio and added sound attenuators at both the start and end of each duct. My worry was that most of the ducts are regular metal ducts, which hardly block any sound on their own. And these ducts are running side by side with ducts feeding other rooms. So what happens if I isolate my studio from the rest of the house, and then sound travels from duct to duct simply because they're right beside each other? It is possible that a baffle box will take care of that, but I didn't want to take any chances. And as I mentioned, the supply duct wasn't installed with an S-curve. To solve this, I developed the technique I mentioned at the start of the video that you won't find anywhere else. I essentially took the baffle box design and used it around the entire duct start to finish. Here's some photos showing the progress on one section of duct. You can see the six inch duct for my studio return very close to the large supply run feeding multiple other rooms in the house. I placed a layer of rock wall above the duct, then built a box out of two by twos, covered it with a layer of drywall, sealing all seams with Acousta Seal. I have a minimum one layer of drywall between the studio ducts and any other duct, and I have two layers of drywall between the studio ducts and any other room. All edges and seams have been sealed with Acousta Seal. A more complicated section was where the studio supply duct runs directly beside a large supply duct for a few rooms, including the gym directly beside my studio. I spent several days cutting drywall and wood studs to create a one layer drywall barrier between the ducts and the studio supply curves underneath one of the joists of the main floor and runs through separate cavities in the floor. This was the only path the duct could follow and I had a lot of trouble sealing off the studio supply duct, but did eventually get it done. There were also a couple other areas that this strategy was too complicated to follow through on, and in those areas I stuffed as much insulation as I could in between the ducts. Apart from the supply and return ducts for the studio, I also placed a layer of drywall over some return ducts running directly above the metal I-beam. One of these is connected to the family room directly above the studio, and the other is connected to the master bedroom. I could have left these, as I would still have two layers of drywall and some insulation between these ducts and the studio, but since they were within inches of the studio, I decided to add a layer of drywall around them. Now we're finally done building the HVAC system, and we can test how well it works. Is it actually silent? Let's find out. To be honest, this turned out better than I was expecting. When the diffuser is off the studio duct, the self noise from the mic is actually higher than the sound coming from the duct. If you have good speakers or headphones, you can hear a baseline hiss that's consistent across all the sound samples. That's the noise from the mic. It's a really strange experience to put your ear up to the duct and feel air blowing on your face, but not hear anything. Even with the diffuser on, I don't hear anything when I'm more than two feet away, and my mix position is four to five feet from the diffuser. The diffuser I installed is the standard cheap diffuser from Home Depot. You can spend more money to get a diffuser that won't introduce so much noise, but at this point, it won't make much difference for me. For context, let's compare the sound of the duct with the diffuser on to the sound of my computer. When I'm sitting at my desk, the only things I can hear are my computer and the self-noise of the monitors if they're on with no sound playing. I was in a bedroom before the studio was built, and I could hear the HVAC every time I turned it on. I didn't want to create a studio only to hear the HVAC more clearly. For me personally, this is a huge validation of the work I put into the HVAC. I've been on a journey over the last three to four years to reduce background noise. It started with switching from an old laptop with loud fans sitting right in front of me to a quiet PC that I could move under the desk. Then I replaced some old monitors with a lot of self noise to Focal Alpha 6.5 Evo monitors. In the bedroom, I couldn't hear the Focals because the HVAC and sounds from the house and the outside world were louder. Now I'm in a studio that's quiet, even without the doors sealed, I can only hear the monitors and the computer, unless the kids are home. But that should change once the doors are sealed. 
At that point, I should be able to play music and only hear the music. I can't wait for that. If you've read Roger Vey's home recording studio Build It Like the Pros, you might remember what he says about the importance of velocity and how you need the air to move slowly to keep the sound down. You achieve this by installing much larger ducts so you can still have the same volume of airflow, but with a slower speed. I couldn't find a way to fit the kind of solution he was recommending into my basement without taking up a huge amount of space. In part, this is due to the I-beam taking up space where a soffit could have gone. I was making a lot of guesses with my own solution, but it seems to have worked out. I would say that Rod's comments about the quality of a diffuser can make a big difference, and I would agree. My HVAC system is only silent when the diffuser is off, but as I've explained, the noise is quiet enough that I don't hear it unless I'm really close. I understand if some of you are disappointed there wasn't a test of sound transfer between rooms. At this stage, the studio doors aren't sealed, so any testing results will be skewed. This is a challenge for any of the strategies I'm using as I build this studio. Everything works together as a single unit. Sound isolation is only as good as the weakest link. Once the doors are finished and properly sealed, I can test how much sound from the rest of the house still comes through the ducts. If I try testing that now, the mic would be picking up sound coming through the door, and it would be impossible to determine how much sound was coming through the duct. The solutions I decided on for my studio were what made most sense based on the goals I had and the space I was working with. I've added links in the description to other videos on YouTube that I would recommend watching if you want to consider other HVAC options. Next video I'll talk about electrical, after that drywall, then the studio doors, and flooring. Then I can properly test sound isolation between the studio and the rest of the house. Don't forget to like and subscribe.